The following is intended only for mature audiences. Open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man, and I am about to trigger the shit out of anybody that hates the cops or is a Black Lives Matter follower. What? Oh, no. Just going to say that right out of the gate. So, Minneapolis police are in the hot seat for shooting a man who had been firing multiple rounds into walls of his apartment building. This put the safety of a mother and her two young children at risk while doing so. After police decided they had to take him down after a six-hour-long standoff, they sniped him and he passed away. Then, Black Lives Matter decided to protest the killing and claimed that more should have been done to save the man. Mm, he seemed like a nice guy. Mother, Arabella Foss Yarbo, called police last Wednesday night after her neighbor, Andrew Techley Sunberg, allegedly fired shots into her apartment as she was cooking for her two young children. And like I said, the gunman was eventually shot dead very early in the morning on Thursday by two MPD snipers. A pistol with extended magazine and several bullet casings were recovered from his apartment and the hallway outside. So that's like the news telling you what happened. I caught wind of this, not because the cops killed a guy, but because there was video going around and a lot of news reporting that a mother was fighting with Black Lives Matter protesters because they were outside her building celebrating the life and decrying police's murder of a gentleman who was having a, quote, mental health crisis. And he had been shooting through the walls of her apartment and almost hit her. And it was like a huge fucking deal. Like, this woman is scarred for life, as are her children, I assume. And she's pissed because Black Lives Matter are out there saying what a tragedy it is. And I'm just going to play some audio of this woman and how she's freaking out and yelling at them because she makes some very valuable and salient points. So, here's some audio. That man was armed. George Floyd was not armed. Breonna Taylor was not armed. This man intentionally tried to kill us. For three years I lived here and none of you guys knocked on that man's door to see if he was okay. Not at all. He played loud music every day to cope with his mindset. There's bullet, there was casings in the hallway. The shot went through my door to the pillar to the kitchen. I was cooking food for my kids. He shouldn't know, it doesn't matter, he shouldn't have been dead. Y'all should have came and helped him when he was alive. Now I can't get my shit because all you guys want to be here. My kids have to see you guys celebrate a man's life that tried to kill him. Now that's one of a bunch of videos that are circulating on the internet about this incident where she went and confronted these protesters. Now in the other video that I saw, she's yelling about how they shouldn't be here, they need to go away, they need to grieve in silence, they should not be celebrating the life of this guy that tried to kill her and her kids. And some guy's like, yeah, but you alive, you didn't get shot. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, dude, are you so far up your own ass that you're going to use this whataboutism or, well, hey, at least you're alive. Like, she went through this fucking harrowing ordeal, and you can't even be empathetic to be like, you know what, you're right, we should probably pump the brakes on this and maybe go protest down at City Hall or MPD headquarters or somewhere else. Like, you've gone to the scene of the crime, and now you're being confronted by the victim, and you're basically telling her to shut the fuck up. Why? Because you're insensitive, single-minded dipshits who only want your cause to be heard and not have to be considerate of the facts. The most telling part about that is the guy that goes, but you alive. That's not a consolation. Think about what she went through. And one other protester, and this is the best quote, someone yells at her, now is not the time. What, for her to be freaking out during their demonstration? When is the time? When it's not inconvenient for your mindless protests? The woman was victimized and she's upset. And you are celebrating the life of the man that victimized her. 
You're sitting here saying, oh, the police did terrible thing by killing him. They didn't do enough to save this man. And, and they fucking did. They so super duper did. It's not even funny how patient they were with this gentleman because there was crazy demand for the body cam footage. And the body cam footage that I saw was the first two responding officers who walk into the building, they go into the stairwell, and all of a sudden they announce themselves because they have metal doors that block both of these hallways to the various wings of the building. Bullet comes through the door, cop backs down the stairs, radio shots fired, two more bullets. It's fucking crazy. And then, after another cop gets there, they open the door because the shooting stops, and you see Miss... uh, Foss Yarbrough, and she's like, help, help, he's shooting, and the cops pull her out, and she's like, wait, my kids, my kids are still inside, and then these two little fucking toddlers, one who's probably like a year old, the other who's maybe three, they slowly saunter out from behind the door frame of their apartment, scared as shit, and you can see bullet holes in the fucking door and the wall next to where they came out. So the cops pull those kids out of there, they've got the mom and the kids safe, and then, holy shit, Another five and a half hours, I would say, the cops tried to work on this. Like, she initially placed the call at 9.34 p.m. And this ended at like 4.18 a.m. after they killed him. Because, once again, he just keeps shooting and shooting and shooting. So again, Black Lives Matter, when do we stop this mindless exaltation of the names of criminals that die committing acts of violence against innocent members of the public? Like, I get what your cause is aimed at, but if a person, no matter what color, shoots at police and then ends up dead, that person isn't a martyr. They received the swift justice they deserved. So say what you want about this guy, not deserving to die, but he attempted to take other lives through acts of reckless disregard. Therefore, by our majority societal standards, he received the ending that best fit the situation. And I can't worry about being hated on for saying so. Criminals that try to take people's lives and shoot at the police, are fine to be shot dead by officers as far as I'm concerned, and also many other members of the public. If you go through the YouTube videos that show the body cam footage and the comment sections, like, go find the Fox 9 YouTube posting of the body cam footage, link in the description, and read some of the comments. I'm not seeing a lot of people that are justifying what this guy did and hating on the cops after they saw what the fuck was actually going on because you really see what the fuck was going on. This guy was shouting from his balcony. He's blasting music. You hear more gunfire in the apartment. He shoots outside, and that's what ultimately they had to take him down. I mean, this was a fucking ordeal. This man was armed and dangerous. So there's no doubt in my mind that if the police, using the force continuum, which is the standard that regulates when they can and cannot use deadly force, says that this man's using deadly force, you have to use an equal to or greater amount of force than what is being used against you to neutralize the threat. Mr. Sundberg was the threat. He was using deadly force, reckless disregard for other people's safety, firing a gun haphazardly off all over the place. He could have killed people. So you have to take him down. What you don't do, all you defund mindset motherfuckers, is send in crisis counselors. Why? But your neighborhood OG who wants to hug it out, he's probably just going to end up a shooting victim or dead if they go on thinking you can reason with somebody that's this mentally ill. And all that this protest has shown me is a lack of logical reasoning going on with Black Lives Matter these days. They expect some magical peace-laden deus ex machina ending for people that break the law via violent acts. Shit don't work that way. The cops have the force continuum. They follow it and are authorized to use deadly force when it's warranted. If you want to know more about that, go look up Minnesota State Statute 609.066. Justifiable use of deadly force by a police officer or peace officer, whatever it says in the statute book. It'll tell you right then and there that they can fucking use deadly force when deadly force is used against them to protect their own lives. And yet still we will have people who will say, well, the cops shouldn't have the right for shit like this. Yes, they fucking should. And I'm glad they do. Because if they didn't, who knows how many people could have been killed by this deranged motherfucker. And I just want to add that that's what he was in the moment, deranged. 
Sure, he was a son and a friend. I'm sure he was a good person to those that knew him. But in the moment that he decided to start indiscriminately shooting through apartment walls at innocent people, he's just a criminal. He's just a threat to public safety that had to be neutralized. And just like what the victim yelled at the protesters, where were all of you when this man needed you? 9.34 p.m., dispatch gets the call. 4.17, 4.18 a.m., he's dead. That's a pretty big fucking window. They had up to 50 officers there from various agencies with their body cams. They had negotiators trying to get this guy to come out. They told him he's under arrest. They said, just put the gun down and stop shooting. Please come outside. He wouldn't do it. And they even brought in his goddamn adoptive parents to try to talk him down. Every effort short of just walking away from the situation and acting like, ah, I'm sure it'll work itself out. They did it. They did everything that you want them to do, and you're still fucking crying about it. The police did their job up to current societal standards, and it wasn't enough. Not because they failed, but because the individual involved wouldn't listen. So now, in your constant effort to move the goalposts, to meet your cause so your argument doesn't seem ridiculous, when do you say, maybe we should just sit this one out? Hmm? Because what if he would have shot her and her kids and killed three innocent people and were burying them? Is that the threshold? Is that when you say, oh my God, good thing the cops got this guy because holy fuck, he was out of control. Or is that even still not beyond the pale for you motherfuckers? Let reasonable heads judge what happened in this incident on this day. Because you're just saying like, oh, he was black and he got killed by the cops. What a fucking tragedy. We demand justice. How fucking dare you? Completely ignoring everything that happened. The totality of the circumstances. That's a legal term. That is something that they tell cops to consider when you show up. You might get there and a woman's like, oh, he beat me up. And he's sitting there and he looks like he's all disheveled and been through a struggle. Maybe he's got some red marks on his hands. Totality of the circumstances. Did anybody else see it? Were their kids? Were their neighbors? What do they hear? What do they see? Are the man's hands red? from defensive wounds where he puts his hands up because she's actually tuning him up like fucking get all the details to simply just say a black man was killed by mpd here we go again hashtag techly sunberg is a gross misunderstanding that you have to look at the full scope of all the details and the body cam don't lie this guy was out of fucking control i watched that shit three times after watching i don't know eight ten a dozen videos from different people's phones and angles and news sources of Miss Foss Yarbrough yelling at all the protesters to go away and stop celebrating the life of this man that traumatized her and her children, going so far as to say, my kids probably have a mental illness now. I won't go that far, but they're definitely going to have PTSD, and hopefully they're young enough that they won't have to fucking remember this. So this guy is everything you don't want him to be, if you're Black Lives Matter. He is a mentally ill, young black man. He's from Ethiopia. That's neither here nor there. I'm just saying for, you know, factual basis. But he's committing violent acts, and he almost injured people, and he shot at cops, and you're still like, oh my God. No, this guy takes all the wind out of the sails of your fucking insane, totalitarian argument that no police should ever shoot anybody. And you got the speaker of Black Lives Matter that was down there sounding like an asshole. You've got a lawyer for the family who's already saying he doesn't want to talk about what he knows about the mindset of Tech Lee Sunberg at the time due to attorney-client privilege. Like, fuck off. The guy was off his rocker. He was on his balcony, waving a gun, shouting a bunch of nonsensical bullshit, and still firing off rounds. He's got music blaring in his apartment. This dude's all kinds of fucked up. This shit happens. These are people that I think the majority of the nation would say, it's okay to take him out. Because if he would have killed a cop, now we got a dead cop. And if that cop had a family, well, now he's got a wife and kids that don't have their dad and husband. So where do we draw the fucking line with common sense that we don't just say all of these lives are worthwhile and nobody should ever die at the hands of the police? You pull a gun, you fire bullets, If the cops are your intended target or they're in the vicinity, you've already written your own death warrant. Fucking accept it. Anybody that's not mentally retarded or whacked out of their mind mentally ill understands that concept. So just 
fucking buy into it, Black Lives Matter, because I want so badly for you as a movement to stop being hijacked by these just zealots that say nobody should ever get killed by the cops. Can somebody reasonable step to the forefront and say, I'm not saying he deserved it, but I understand the situation, and I guess it makes sense that it ended the way it did. Just be sensible about it, and then the rest of society won't fucking hate you and think your cause is just racist against white people and anti-cop. You're doing yourselves no favors by having this reaction, and thank fuck that nobody got hurt besides the one person who deserved to die, and that's the mentally ill, deranged gunman. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast. I'm J-Man. And that's the end.